Hey, how's it going, friends? Thank you for tuning in to VR Revelations once again. Welcome. It's January 30th, the year of our Lord, 2023. So, we have yours truly, Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg, uh, who traveled to South Korea now and is pretty much twisting the arm of South Korea to get them to send weapons to Ukraine because, you know, Ukraine is winning the war. Uh, now, South Korea isn't part of NATO, of the NATO alliance, but essentially they're like a satellite state for the United States, uh, much like Japan. So, uh, Stoltenberg here, Stoltenberg traveled over to South Korea and he had some things to say about the situation right now in Ukraine, while at the same time uh, pressuring South Korea to send weapons uh, to support Ukraine. So, uh, you're going to start to see more pressure on all these other countries now, and I'm sure that if they... Uh, refuse to do so, there will be some uh, threats made uh, via economic sanctions. Um, so that's what happens when you allow one of these people into your country. Uh, anyways, so let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, take a look at what he said here. I'm going to read a little bit from this Associated Press article here. So it says, NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg on Monday called for South Korea to provide direct military support to Ukraine, saying Kyiv is in urgent need. Remember, guys, they're telling us that everything's fine, that Ukraine is winning the war, uh, but they're in urgent need of weapons to fight off the prolonged Russian invasion. South Korea, a growing arms exporter with a well-equipped U.S.-backed military, there you go, guys, another proxy state of the American empire, has provided humanitarian aid and other support to Ukraine while joining U.S.-led economic sanctions against Moscow. But it has not directly provided arms to Ukraine, citing a long-standing policy of not supplying weapons to countries actively engaged in conflict. Well, so much for that, guys. You better give in or it's not going to be good for you, huh? Speaking at a forum in uh, Seoul, Stoltenberg, a former Norwegian prime minister, urged South Korea to step up on the specific issue of military support. <laughs> oh, man. Why did, you, why did you invite him over, huh? He noted that several NATO members and allies, including Germany, Norway, and Sweden, have changed their policies of not exporting weapons to countries uh, in conflict to support Ukraine. Again, NATO members. I believe that South Korea is not an official uh, NATO member. If we believe in freedom, if we believe in democracy, uh, right, uh, if we don't want autocracy and tyranny to win, then they need weapons. That's the reality, said Stoltenberg who arrived in South Korea on Sunday on a trip that also includes Japan. Oh, so a lot uh, more arm twisting uh, is coming here since he's going over to Japan. I'm sure he's going to pressure the Japanese. Essentially, that that's what they're doing. They're going around the world to all these allied nations uh, and are they're pretty much going to start pressuring them to send more weapons. Uh, because, you know, Ukraine is winning, according to, to Western sources. Stoltenberg also met with South Korean President Yon Suk Yeol on Monday. They discussed South Korea's commitment to support Ukraine and NATO's possible role in dissuading North Korea from its growing nuclear ambitions following an unprecedented number of ballistic missile tests in 2022, Yoon's office said. South Korea officials didn't confirm any specific discussions about sending arms to Ukraine following a meeting with South Korean Foreign Minister Park Jin on Sunday. Stoltenberg mentioned U.S. intelligence reports accusing North Korea of providing weapons to Russia to support its war in Ukraine. Now, there were reports that uh, North Korea was providing weapons uh, via its border with Russia to the Wagner Group, to the Wagner a private military corporation, which, you know, it could be true. Again, North Korea is an ally of Russia and South Korea 
it's pretty much a uh, an, an American satellite state. So, uh, you know, it's not surprising that uh, North Korea it probably is providing weapons to Russia. Um, since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, South Korea has reached billions of dollars worth of deals to provide tanks, howitzers, fighter jets, and other weapon systems to Poland, a NATO member. An American official said in November that the United States has agreed to buy 100,000 artillery rounds from South Korean manufacturers to provide to Ukraine, although South Korean officials have maintained that munitions were meant to ref refill depleted U.S. stocks. So I'm sure a lot of that ammunition that uh, they've delivered to Poland obviously has made it into Ukraine. But again, Stoltenberg here is telling them that they need to provide direct support. Um, so uh, it says, in an interview with the Associated Press this month, Yoon said that South Korean laws as well as domestic public opinion make it difficult for his government to arm Ukraine while it is at war. Which, again, he's probably going to give in to uh, pressure from uh, NATO, uh, also known as the United States. Uh, Stoltenberg's comments at the forum came hours after North Korea condemned his visit to South Korea and Japan, saying that NATO was trying to put its military boots in the region and attempting to pressure America's Asian allies into providing weapons to Ukraine, which is... A uh, pretty good analysis there by North Korea. That's exactly what they're doing, guys. It's all politics. They're not just traveling there to say hello. They're trying to carry out an agenda, right? Uh, in a statement released by the state-run Korean Central News Agency, North Korea said that increasing cooperation between NATO and U.S. allies in Asia was part of a process to create an Asian version of NATO that would raise tensions in the region, which is uh, pretty true. Um, also, in uh, other reports here, uh, Stoltenberg mentioned that uh, uh, Russia is getting ready to, you know, launch a major offensive, that uh, they are mobilizing uh, more troops. And uh, so it seems like at the same time, while they're trying to paint a, uh, a picture here of Ukraine being successful and holding back the Russians and taking back some territory, which is a whole bunch of lies. We know that Russia, as we continue to analyze the situation, continues to advance. They're getting ready to take Bakhmut. And so they are moving forward, and there probably will be a large offensive here pretty soon. Um, but all the while, uh, Zelensky is saying that they need weapons now, that if it takes them months, it's going to be too late. And then now we have uh, Stoltenberg here literally traveling around the world to all these uh, perceived allies of the United States and NATO, pretty much twisting their arms to send more weapons to Ukraine. So really, you know, they're saying one thing, but their actions are saying that uh, Ukraine is literally close to collapsing, that uh, they need urgent help. And uh, I, I don't think they're going to get it. I think that uh, Ukraine is going to collapse pretty soon. Again, things are sort of calm right now but i think we're in the eye of the storm and uh i think here in the next couple of weeks especially next month uh as we get ready uh you know to to head into next month here since it's already january 30th big things are coming big developments and uh you know before ukraine collapses i, th I think they're sort of gonna try to make a a rush delivery of these arms, uh, but I think it's going to be too late. And again, uh, there's you have to step back and look at the bigger picture, guys. Um, the United States was just trying to make the most out of this situation, but once this is all over and Russia is victorious, they are going to be the new vanguard of this new world order. And so the United States is going to see itself in a situation it has, uh, you know, never found itself in. I think its economy is going to collapse. But again, as I've talked on my channel before, I believe there will rise a new world order. Um, and now I'm getting biblical. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm starting to get spiritual about the matter. I think that uh, 
the Bible tells us, right, in the book of Revelations that there will be a new world order where no one will be able to buy and sell. And so I think the United States will uh, create a new world order, a new monetary system along with all its allies. And one of the justifications for this new world system from their side is going to be to combat communism and these dictatorships. Uh, that being uh, Russia and China. Um, but eventually, I think it is going to end up in a World War III, in a nuclear apocalypse, because the Bible uh, has warned us that, um, you know, there will be an end to the world, and it will be by fire. But again, many people are wondering, is it going to be over Ukraine? Personally, I don't think it's going to be over Ukraine, but I think this is going to give rise to these two sides of these new world orders, one being Russia and China and its allies, as we're already seeing since the war began, and the United States and its allies. Now, it's going to seem uh, like, uh, you know, the United States is collapsing. But again, if you go take a look at uh, my videos on the uh, religious deception that is coming to the world. I believe there will be a major religious movement in the United States, and uh, it's sort of going to empower the U.S. and all its allies, um, and they will think that it's a miracle from God. Uh, again, it's very interesting because the United States is a Christian nation, and so is Russia. Uh, Vladimir Putin is a Christian, an Orthodox Christian, and President Joe Biden is a Catholic, right? So they both claim to believe in Christ, uh, but we know that pretty much the whole world is corrupt. It's full of sin and evil, and so ultimately God does have to judge all nations on this planet. They all have to make way uh, according to God's prophecies. Because God will establish a kingdom, right? A kingdom that will not be made by man, but it will be established by God himself, where there will be no corruption. And so, you know, both of these sides will claim to be fighting for God. They will claim that uh, God is on their side. And, you know, God is still able to use these nations as an instrument to carry out his purposes and his will. And uh, I think that's one major factor that, or angle that people are missing from this whole thing, the spiritual side of it. Now, if you actually go watch a lot of Vladimir Putin's speeches, you know, he talks a lot about how America is trying to corrupt the traditional values of the family and and he even mentions verses from the bible so there is a, a spiritual undertone to all of this and if you actually go and take a look at some of the things that uh the orthodox church is saying there in russia you'll realize this and also if you go and take a look at what the vatican is you'll see that the vatican is siding with the united states with the West, right, with NATO, it's starting to more openly condemn Russia now. So again, this is all going to uh, take a, a very uh, deep religious tone pretty soon. So um, just keep that in mind. Again, I'm sort of vaguely talking about this, but I have uh, uh, dove deeply more into those matters in my videos. Uh, which are titled "Signs of the End of uh, of the End Times." Uh, you could go take a look at that video, the religious deception coming to America, and so I think you're going to have sort of the United States with the Catholic Church and Russia with the Orthodox Church, then Communist China. And eventually, these nations will face off in a World War III, and again, I think that the Ukraine the Ukraine conflict here was sort of that turning point where we're now going to see these new world orders uh, starting to take shape and again i think uh this year is i think this year russia will come out victorious and uh, the united states and the west will find themselves in a panic but i don't think the end of the world is going to come 
just yet. I do believe we are in the end of days according to Bible prophecy. But again, I think there has to be other Bible prophecies. Uh, there, they, they have to be fulfilled before we actually see a nuclear apocalypse, right? Um, the Bible prophesies of this new world order where nobody can buy and sell except they take the mark of the beast. There's a lot of speculation about the mark of the beast. I could get into that topic in another video also. We also know that the Antichrist has to manifest himself and take control of this, uh, of this system, right? And he's going to fool uh, the majority of the world. And so we know that there will be a great tribulation also before the end. And so we have to keep an eye on the biblical prophecies and as, as to how they relate to everything going on right now uh, in politics, right, on the world scene. Because, again, uh, you know, the unbelievers, those that don't believe in the Bible, they, they look at the world through the lens of politics, uh, through international politics. But we know that the Bible tells us... Uh, tells us a different story. It tells us uh, why these things are taking place and how they are going to take place, right? Um, the Bible is a book of prophecies, and we've seen that throughout history since the beginning of time. We've seen the uh, story of Israel, right? We can trace them back all the way back to the Babylonian times, through the Egyptian times, through the Greeks, the Persians, the the Romans, and and then now this whole Christian era of these last 2023 uh, years. And so, again, uh, very interesting here. And, of course, uh, we are going to see this uh, anti-Russian spirit grow even stronger amongst the uh, populaces of all these Western countries because they are ideologically opposed to each other, right? Their way of living. Uh, they, they, you know, the, the Russians and the eastern part of the world is a lot more conservative, uh, right? Uh, I guess uh, the West would say they're a lot more uh, 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 suppressing. Uh, and, you know, the West considers themselves a lot more libertarian. Uh, but in reality... Uh, you know, there is no freedom, there is no liberty uh, without Christ. Um, you can't truly be free if God doesn't make you free from sin. That's why it doesn't matter what place in the world you live, as long as people live contrary to God's words, uh, to God's word, right? As long as people fornicate, as long as people lie, as long as people commit adultery, as long as people steal, as long as people live in sin, uh, there will always be corruption and there will always be wars. And this is the reality that we live in. Again, the Bible is true and everything uh, that is written in the Bible is taking place right now. So anyways, um, very interesting here. Uh, we see NATO now going around to all these Asian countries pretty much twisting their arms so that they can send more weapons into Ukraine. Uh, and it's becoming more clear now that uh, Ukraine has run out of time. That's going to be it for this video, guys. Just remember, the truth is stranger than fiction. Anyways, thank you for tuning in. Have a wonderful day, and God bless.